this is a discussion podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Libraries are funded by the people, therefore they are socialist. <laughs> what? Uh, how? Basically, you uh, believe you pay for our libraries through taxes. Ergo, they're just funded by the people. People. Ah, okay. So, same thing like the police and fire department, right? Yes, and yet somehow, if you bring this topic up in any other way, it's socialist. This is the penguin weighing in on politics. Oh, you mean Spongebob? Does Spongebob look like a penguin? Oh, well, the voice actor is. But anywho, also joining us today is Sapphire Heart Song. Meh. That that was a weird segue. Meh. (laughs) (laughs) Sapphire Heart Song. Oh, right. I forgot she has another name. He's reading off the book. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's also anime Christy, but... (laughs) uh... Meh. And also joining us today is Totera. I stay away from libraries because reading books are for eggheads. Oh, yeah. You're an egghead. Well, thank you. I actually do think I have a, sh- a head shaped like an egg. Uh, no, I can't wait for the picture of you and Dusty get together. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna shave my beard and be a younger version of Dusty Cat. Shave? No, no, no. Do, do, oh, do what he has. Do what he has, but younger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <coughs> also, anywho, in today's episode review, we are going to review Season 9, Episode 5, The Point of No Return. In this episode, Twilight Sparkle realized she never returned a book to Cantalot Library and may have caused her favorite librarian, Dusty Pages, to lose her job. What have you done, you monster you? So, before we head on, let's go to First Impressions. Silver! Well, this was a lot more fun than I expected. I admit my view was jaded based on cartoons from my childhood. Believe me, I've seen some weird stuff involving libraries and late fees. It haunts me, man. It haunts me. But I found this to be a lot of fun. I mean, it's the usual Twilight freakout, but after a time, you actually realize it's not just Twilight who has the problem. It's the whole blessed uh, Canterlot library system. In fact, the, how super serious they take this, like, dang, people, y'all need to chill out. The library has to have their jolly somewhere. This ain't jollies. This is, uh, you're working on an aneurysm <laughs> here. Uh, anywho, Sapphire Heart Song, what do you think? You don't have to add the heart song, <laughs> Jesus, Norman, anyways. <laughs> so, I'm gonna be honest, when I first saw this episode, I didn't really pay any mind to it. Like, at first, like, okay, this is going to be a Twilight freak out episode, oh my god. It's like I was trying to think of the many tropes that were going to come into play, and honestly, this actually kind of took into a turn where it's like I didn't know where the episode was going. Like, I actually couldn't tell what the episode was going to pull after a while. It's like, okay, you have my attention. And just the lesson... I'm gonna admit, I also watched this episode once. I don't know why. I just didn't have time to, like, catch up on it. Alright, alright. I I remember enjoying it, though. Alright, alright. And also, Tara, what do you think? I really enjoyed it. I liked, I mean, obviously, you know, we got an episode with Twilight going Twily Nanas or um, Twilighting, you know, depending on what you like. But so much continuity in here too it brings up so many memories from season one and whatnot and um at parts would be it got me thinking oh okay this this is probably gonna happen in the episode and then nope all of a sudden it changes something else we're like okay that's uh something i wasn't expecting oh don't forget we get like a season five and season six callbacks right. yeah continuity the thing that destroyed your castle <laughs> you bring up old wounds sir continuity <laughs> Would you like a bucket of salt to fill in Silver's <laughs> wound there, Tortera? I would like to. Well, too Pardon bad. Me while I... Aww. You get lemons. Pardon me. Those sting Pardon even me more. I... <laughs> get Silver. Pardon me while I go get my blue Pokeballs. Oh, not this again. <laughs> <laughs> Order shit from Amazon. <laughs> uh, and as for me, I like this episode. This episode was a lot of fun. Uh, the Twilight Free Cut was interesting until the twist and. The twist was not bad too. And yeah, I say twist for a reason, but when we get into it, people will understand. 
So anyway, if people have not watched this episode yet, pause here and go watch. Welcome back, I hope you like the episode. So we start off the episode with our favourite male mare flying packages to the castle, not really the castle, the new school, yes. Spike's there reading a comic and Derpy crashes into a pool and yeah, let's just say she's okay, best male mare. Woohoo! She's invincible. Nothing can destroy yep, yep. her. Not even censorship. Uh, that's so true. But anywho, Twilight checks what's in the box and oh, it's all her stuff from her room from Cantalot. And Celestia says, yo, Twilight, uh, I was doing some cleaning and I thought that you might love your junk back. Okay, here you go. Uh, have fun. So check in the box. There's uh, macaroni and cheese. No, uh, macaroni photo frame. Yay. Then some scrolls, some books, and Spike accidentally falls in and reveals a book. And said book is a library book she borrowed from season one. <gasps> oh no! Ooh, the late fees. Although we're a little vague on how late. I mean, time in this show has always been a bit of a... Well, let's headache. just say the silver. How long? Um, Spike's voice cracked from when he first appeared. <laughs> Now, this is where my, my childhood memories uh, play with my expectations. I don't know if you're aware of this, but there was once upon a time a Saturday morning cartoon called Bill and Ted's Most that Excellent one. Adventures. I, wait, that was a freaking no, no. cartoon? I thought it's it was a movie. It's a movie they made it into a cartoon. It, I just a, watched one, the movie. <laughs> this was, cartoon was before the second movie. I also saw that. <laughs> so basically... Uh, in the plot of this cartoon, Bill and Ted have a late have a late fee from their childhood, which is in the sum of some fifteen hundred dollars. Oh, wow. wow! And so I thought, are they going to try this now in My Little Pony? That's going <laughs> to be weird. So I kind of watched this with some apprehension. Oh, really? No. Okay. Well, was it that bad in Bill and Ted's? Okay. Everything about Bill and Ted's was bad. It was dumb. It was one of those dumb Saturday morning cartoons that you could tell they were ca- trying to cash in. I mean, this is a group that presented the Underground Railroad as a literal railroad. All right. Dumb then. All right, then. Incredibly dumb. And yet, I was a kid. I didn't know quality at the time. This is why, uh, this is why grown-ups talk about kids' cartoons. There's a better way to judge what's really good qu- quality. Because we've been around the block a few times. True. And also back then, people... <laughs> yeah, we're... Um, how do we jaded in terms of uh, tie-in cartoons? I think the last good one that I heard was uh, there's a few, but what uh, that Godzilla cartoon? I heard that was good. Remember that one? Which one? Oh, the one Which from one? Hanna Barbera? No, uh, the one that was a quote-unquote spin-off to the '97 Godzilla. Oh, that one. I think that one got higher praise. But then again, with that Godzilla, you're setting the bar low no matter what. <laughs> yeah, true. But anyway, let's return to ponies. So Twilight discovered that she's late on the returning of the books and drags Spike to Cantalot ASAP to return said book. Or at least um, tries to reminisce about her past when she borrowed a book. Uh, she borrowed a book from, what was her name again? Uh, Co- not Cozy, um... Dusty Pages, and yeah, she, she had a fun time. Like, she had a wonderful childhood and whatnot. And it sets up like, oh, um, don't forget to return the book on time. My number one uh, book uh, borrower person, you, yes, you. With the uh, always returning book back on time picture and stuff, which is kind of creepy. So, um, now this sets up the episode season one kind of thing. So, yay, this starts and, oh, because of the Nightmare Moon incident, she haven't read the book and accidentally drops it under a bed. So, yay. So now she remembers some of the things and, oh, no, she has to return it ASAP. For shame. I know. But I do like the flashback. The flashback was kind of cool. And I think this is new animation, by the way. Although one has to question, how many times can you milk the same scene for an extra story that was a busy day in canterlot if only twilight knew which one well she was about to go off to and save all equestria but break the heart 
of a former friend oh. whom she would reconcile with after she became an alicorn. But she also left behind a book that ended up costing a librarian her job. And I bet if she had something for lunch, which probably made a guy a multimillionaire who opened his own franchise called uh, Five Mayor's Burgers. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> you know, he, here here's a question about, like, the uh, ethics of, like, Firing the librarian because someone didn't return a book. Uh, Do they not give out notices? Okay, um, jumping a bit there, Sappy. Uh, pause there before we before we kind of talk because um, we got no idea if she's fired or not. So, anywho, um, oh, I thought we were talking. Not yet, not yet. Well, I'm actually curious how this episode like was brought into a meeting. It's like, hmm, we're looking back at season one. Twilight pushes a book to the side. We're writing an episode about that. <laughs> I mean, that's so cool. I mean, okay. Um, have you guys heard of the butterfly effect or um, similar to that? What was it? Um, Chesh- uh, Cheshire's cat or something like that? Uh, uh, I-, I think you mean the uh, 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 chaos uh, theory. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, just yes, boom. But anyway, um, I do like that scenario there. Like something small happens and then it has an effect down the line or something like that. Because if you think about it, that what Celestia did with Twilight, groomed her to save her sister and somehow took her place for, well, uh, becoming the ruler of Tantalor or Equestria. <clears throat> so that's something cool and interesting. I-, I do like the setup here where, oh, something she did in season one affected a lot of people. I mean, with uh, Moon Dancer, they set that one up real well. They used that as a storyline for a later episode in the season. But with this one, huh, how can we make this work? Oh, like Terra said, Twilight accidentally drops a book. Okay, episode. <laughs> so, anywho, they went to Cantalot to return the book, and Twilight is afraid that, hey, uh, if I, the Princess of Friendship, popular for being a bookworm, uh, returns my book late, I would have the, the, the shame, oh, the shame, and they might revoke my library card, and oh, that library card picture is so cute. <laughs> well, I mean, nobody, nobody's looks good. It's, it's cute, but it doesn't look good. <laughs> because there's something about library cards and driver's licenses. You are just not allowed. You basically look like you have a mugshot. <laughs> Although, actually, I we should be clear, it's the library card looks awful, but then there's the uh, Best Returns mm-hmm. Award that they have. Her- that picture looks really good. Yeah, that, that, that's happy and cute. Like. It's so adorable. Why can't you let that be your your uh, card <laughs> photo? Uh, well, I don't know. But still, um, Twilight and Spike goes into the library, and Twilight attempts to return the book, but... Spike just blurts it out. Okay, uh, Twilight here has a late book that she wants to return. Uh, where, uh, where does she do it? And okay, here, here, return the book. And the uh, librarian checks the record for uh, some of the books. And oh gosh, this book is really, really late. So what you need to do is go to the basement and go to the sh- um, shame of an overdue book. Something like that. Uh, no, this is called the, she has to go see first folio in the grossly overdue book return office for ponies who should know better. <laughs> wow, that's a long <laughs> sentence. Which is in the basement because of the shame. <laughs> and it was at this point, it's like, okay, this is not just going to be a Twilight Freaks Out Over Nothing episode. These Canterlot ponies are hardcore. Well, why not, right? Like, you can have the scare of people about uh, returning books. Yeah, but they just, like, just shove it right in their face like you overdo this book for shame shame on you there's also some passive aggressiveness in this uh the title of this office i mean twilight, <laughs> twilight could reply with okay i'll just head down the stairs that weren't blown up by nightmare moon because me and my friends stopped them i guess it's just so it's just terribly bad that i had a late fee because i was off saving the world <laughs> twilight's better than that <laughs> well i'm not <laughs> But anywho, as they go down the dungeon, they discover that First Folio is not there and is out to lunch. And Twilight decides to, you know, go out for lunch. Not to eat, but to hunt down First Folio. What? I'm sure she could also use some lunch. Although, if I was First Folio, I'd want to get out of that office as much as possible. 
I hate beans having an office in the basement. Why would you do that? I don't know. Isolation? Well, I mean, uh, I'm recording in my basement. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a personal space. That's sort of a creative center. Believe me, I, I too have done some of my best work, you know, creative work in isolation. But when you're at a job where you're directly supposed to connect and work with people, being stuck in the basement is kind of a signal saying, yeah, we don't want to work with you. Anywho, uh, Twilight and Spike arrive at Tika Masala's shop, and this is the third restaurant that they went to to look for first folio. And Spike is crying because he's hungry. Oh, God. Just like me at BernieCon 2017. <laughs> <laughs> well, you gotta eat. You gotta eat to take care of yourself. Don't don't pull a keyframe. <laughs> well, I, I, mean, I nearly passed out the one time while Silver was at a panel. <laughs> yeah. And I was trying to sell stuff, and then Josh and Ari came up and were like, Hey, are you okay? I'm starving, and I feel like I'm gonna die. Would you like some Subway? Okay. All right, guys, 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 guys. Uh, people who are listening to this and people who are going to co- any conventions, by the way, I want you to remember the rules, which is two meals at least, sorry, two showers, three meals, and what, six hours of sleep, something like that? That was so wrong, I, I actually feel pain <laughs> on your behalf. There's a physical pain where there shouldn't be. Six hours, two meals, one shower. Ah, yeah, yes. Six, six two, two, one. To one. No. I, I don't know. But you, you've been to conventions. Wait, I'm uh, I'm suddenly I'm suddenly concerned about what you did at those conventions. Did you have three <laughs> meals, two hours of sleep, and one I don't know rave party? I don't know <laughs> something like that. Probably. <clears throat> I just but no, I work. Still- <laughs> I weep for the future. Y'all are crazy. <laughs> But I'm serious. I'm, but I'm serious here. Uh, remember to take a shower. Remember to eat. Remember to rest. Because if you do not rest, you are going to be cranky. And if you're cranky, no one's going to be happy. So do take care of yourself while you're at uh, any convention. I've been at enough anime conventions where uh, people didn't take a shower. You can tell. <laughs> oh, God. oh, Lord. You can, can you tell? tell. Uh, no, no, no. But I, in I, my I defense, been, though... I didn't completely starve. I was just always eating the food at the convention. I didn't really leave the convention to go eat because I didn't know where to go. <laughs> well, we could, we can fix that this year. But uh, speaking of funny smells, Indian food. <laughs> hey, it's nice to smell food. Anywho, not not, not after the digestion process. That oh, I promise. Yeah, this is making no, me hungry. That, now. That, that's 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 something different. But anywho, um, so, so, uh, ponies mystique. Spike for a waiter, and it seems that Spike is really professional at ordering food. So, yay, awesome him. So, honestly, um, I, I think you should be a little outraged. Oh, just because I'm a dragon, you assume I work here? Uh, no comment. I, I got no idea. I mean, well, I mean, uh, if you think about it, dragons are hot because they are the fire breath, and the food is uh, spicy hot. No, it's plain racist. <laughs> I, well, I don't know. We, when you said dragons are hot, all the Ember fans out there were like, yeah! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the thing that I'm actually curious, though, is that even though he doesn't work there, and after he takes the order, it's he recommends something they should order. It's like, you don't work there, but yet you know the menu off by heart. <laughs> I'm guessing that he's been there a few times with Rarity. Oh, yeah. Rarity and Pinky would probably have sung its praises. True that. But while Spike is taking orders... Twilight bumps into Moon Dancer. Yay! Call back! Woo! You know, I actually. <laughs> I actually thought I'd never see her again! <laughs> Twilight recolor! Woo! Oh, but she's. You get to see, like, her eyes are fully open now. She doesn't have that half closed disdain for the world. She yep. looks happy! And wait, you know, I'm only just noticing by looking at the screenshots now. Mm hmm. Her sweater is, is, well, okay, it's got a few loose strands. Okay, no, she's still got to work on that personal hygiene. <laughs> yeah. I do mention her frame's still all frizzled up. Frizzled up. Well, she needs to work on that. Yeah, brushing. Brush. You need to brush. Oh, well, she could be just being after a game of whatever ball she played in the episode she premiered in. Yeah. 
Uh, Norman, I am far too much have far too much college humor for you to just say balls casually. <laughs> in that. Says the one who talks about Real- throwing blue, blue balls at me. <laughs> blue balls. Proving <laughs> <laughs> his point <Balls>. exactly. <laughs> 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 well, anywho, <clears throat> Moon Dancer here introduced Twilight to her friend, First Folio, and oh my goodness, this is the pony that Twilight has been looking for. So, anywho, as they talk, uh, Twilight asks for First Folio if she remembers a pony by the name of Dusty Pages, and First Folio says, "Oh, um, she got fired a long time ago. Oh, she, because some inconsiderate." Uh, Pony didn't return a book. Oh, the the shame. Oh, the shame. Do they not have late fees? Do they not, like, send out a notice in the mail or something? Do Twilight's parents not forward her mail? (laughs) Uh, Here's the part where I'm just speculating and uh, First Folio got... Maybe First Folio sent a mail notice and... Since it was sent to the Cantaloupe Castle to Twilight's room, she never got it and stuff. And yeah, stuff. Well, I'm sorry I didn't check my mail, but uh, there was this little thing called Nightmare Moon invading. And you know, I was busy saving the world (laughs) again and again. So I'm so sorry I didn't check my mail. (laughs) Uh, But anywho... With that revelation, Twilight um, exits the restaurant and explains the situation to Spike and she feels very, very guilty. And, well, Twilight being Twilight knows where Dusty Pages lives and goes to her place. Now, this pony here, I would say that he needs an attitude adjustment because this guy really needs to be smacked over the head. Oh, no, Norman, don't you see his cutie mark? What? Let's see, let's see. Um, His cutie mark is a load page. Come on. Dumbbell. Yes. <laughs> I just got that. Oh, but you also have to uh, consider something. Lauren Faust actually said on Twitter, pardon me, I will, I will pull this up. Mm-hmm. Uh, while you do that, I will continue on. So, anywho, Twilight oh, no, goes. No, no, don't continue. On. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna, you're gonna, uh, okay, you're okay. gonna ruin the joke. Norman, have some patience. Oh, okay. Have some patience. All right, Lauren Faust said Twilight's true love was meant to be an Earth pony named. Oh wait, it was Stud Muffin. His cutie mark is a dumbbell. This is Twilight's first meeting with her future husband. Don't you know? <laughs> no. And because he's a jerk, that means they must fall in love. It's shipping rules. No, no. Eth. No. Eth. No. I have loudly declared this, so it must be true. But if that... As by you that tr- lo- <laughs> oh, no. Don't ever start an argument by that logic. It shows you're about to get the logic all wrong. Trust me. I've seen this happen enough on the <laughs> internet. <laughs> uh, a phony named Stud Muffin with, tree- with dumbbells, right? Well, why not? Call him Stud Muffin. Okay. Goodness, was that in the... I have to look at the credits now. What did they call it? If his name was Stud Muffin, I'd be like Illuminati confirmed here. Go ahead, bro. While you try finding his name, I will continue on. <clears throat> so, anywho, Twilight goes to the Sea Pages' house and knocks on the door. And Pony Jerk comes out saying that no salesmen, no solicitors, no choirs, and so on. So, this guy is very antisocial. And... The way that he talks to Twilight is very, very rude. I mean, yeah, ponies not knowing who you are or not caring that your Princess Twilight Sparkle is one thing, but outright not knowing who you are, Princess of Friendship is one, like, that needs... Yeah, yeah, banish, banish the moon. Well, okay, this guy, within the credits, he's known only as Meathead Pony. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. Well, either way, it fits his name. <laughs> yes, yes. But my shipping joke will remain, if only to drive you all nuts. <laughs> what would the children look like? Oh, God. <laughs> uh, let's, just, let's just say they won't have any because he's too small. <laughs> wow, Norman. <laughs> 
Norman, go going the extra mile. <laughs> Talk about the mini sausage links. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're short too. They're short. Well, no now, wonder he had such. Now my a... question is, how does Norman know? <laughs> One can find the size. Are you looking down there, Norman? One can find the size. Well, anywho, what do you guys know? Wait, what, what whoa, guys... whoa, whoa, no, 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 whoa! Don't change whoa, the subject. <laughs> Uh, well, you, you you did say you fantasized about mini sausage links. Apparently, is it a is it a short daydream? <laughs> oh, you got me there. Shoot. <laughs> and and now, ladies and gentlemen, we know something about Norman that we never really wanted to know. <laughs> the more you know. <laughs> the less you understand. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh, but anywho, what do you guys think of this character? Oh, what, what the what the the mini sausage link? Maybe that's what Colin from now on. <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah, he's very very rude, but he's usually something happens to make people have this unique policy. So he's probably had a lot of people come by and interrupt his workout sessions or some such. All right. Also, I'm more concerned that Lemon Hearts is like right down the street, and she doesn't say hi to Twilight. I mean, Lemon what's up with that? Down the street, really? Yeah, she's walking down the street just uh, less than half a block from Twilight. Um, which panel is this again? Because I do see Colgate. Uh, let's see here. Well, oh well, she didn't say hello either. Huh. Yeah, because it's she right was running. Twi- Sorry. It's right when she's Twilight is approaching. Uh, I'm going to call him uh, Stud Muffin's uh, front door. So she's right outside the house. You can see all these no no solicitation signs. But she's walking away, so she wouldn't be looking back for no reason. And Twilight could see her, but she's too fixated on this quest. But, oh, Twilight, don't forget the Unicorn 5. <laughs> Never forget the Unicorn 5. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but anywho, uh, guys, rest, Seppi, Terra. Well, ladies first. Do, do well, we want to talk more I... about Norman's fantasies? Yes. No. <laughs> because Ooh. honestly, I didn't really have anything to talk about, but now it's like, okay, Norman. Move on. <laughs> Wait, what What if we talked about Bayonetta enjoying a mini sausage? Hmm. Probably later. 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 <laughs> oh, wow. he, he's holding back what? as much as he can. <laughs> later, with a fine brandy at a quiet, <laughs> at a quiet night. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so, well, okay. I, I will, I will voice my protest over the next sequence. Twilight Sparkle goes on a search for uh, silver, something. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> she's just got to find a silver. So she checks all these places where there's ponies. She checks Silver Stream. She checks Silver Mines. Mm-hmm. She doesn't look for Silver Quill. I feel, I feel cheated. Well, she doesn't know where you are. You, you kind of vanish after your "quote unquote" castle has been well, uh, continued <laughs> continuation. Con- something was it? Yeah, continuity, continuity. destroyed. Yeah. Well, what do you mean, my so-called castle? I mean, it, this was. It it's was my big... castle now. <laughs> my so-called castle is it? Norman, and your so-called fantasies. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> but I will say, uh, looking for Silver Stream at the end, that was just a fun little <laughs> visual side. <laughs> yeah. That, that was like out of nowhere. I mean, she has to try everything, right? Oh, by the way, I um, noticed uh, Smolder. She's enjoying a cup of tea. <laughs> so, can a girl enjoy a cup of tea? Yeah, uh-huh. what, what, am I, what am I missing here? Yeah, I don't, know, I don't guess, get it. Like, oh, yeah, like, well, oh, well, she should have the princess dress on. That's why. Yeah. But no, but she's the only one with tea out, and there's no coffee table, so where would she put that thing? That's what you think. It, it, it's a teacup, but you don't know what's in it. So anywho, uh, Twilight travels all around and decides to visit the Silver, <laughs> silver Stable community, and it is a old folks home. Oh, okay. Wait, Silver, did you mention in episode one, uh, Luna wanted to go there? Yeah, I've been wondering about that. I think she said, I have to go back and check. Was it Silver? It was not Silver Shores. 
Let's see here. MVP. I'm looking because Luna should not have to go into a retirement home just yet. She's still young. Yeah, about a thousand years old, young. She and wants to hang out year- with the old people. A thousand years young. Thank you, Norman. <laughs> yes, you're welcome. So, anyway, while you go check that, I will proceed. So, anyway, Twilight goes there and Spike says, Oh my gosh, this place is... Before he could finish the line, Twilight finishes it for him and says, Awful, look, there's no books. Oh, God, no, no, no. It's like Twilight thinks that, oh, because Dusty Pages lives or works in a library before, she was happy. And, oh my goodness, look look at all the places. Like, oh, no, oh, like no books. Like, hmm, okay. Okay, so I, crisis is slightly averted. Oh? Uh... Princess Luna wanted to go to Silver Shoals, and this is uh, Silver Stables. But then that raises a question. I'm not familiar. Shoal. A large number of fish swimming together. Oh, that could be the beach she went to, where she got the... A large number of people. Yeah, so basically she wanted to just hang out at the beach, which we'll see how well that goes. Yeah, I mean, that was a fun episode. But anywho... Uh, Twilight shows the uh, Twilight goes to the receptionist and asks, hey, "Do you know a pony by the name of Dusty Pages?" And she says, "Yes, she's by that location." And Twilight has been contemplating about her situation and Dusty's situation, and um, also talking about uh, talking for Dusty that, "Oh no, she's having a bad time. This is all her fault and whatnot." And when they knock the door, no one's answering. And they kind of try and find Dusty. And it seems that the uh, retirement center is pretty active. There's paintings, there's a lot of activity. So I'm just going to go through. And the gimmick here is every time when Twilight goes to one place, she's not there, and so on. So those places are like first painting, second yoga, Third is woodcraft and parasailing, which is kind of cool for all people to do. I got to be honest when I uh, when I attended a retirement community, they had a magician come in. Oh, cool! He was a, he was a nice guy, but you could you could tell the energy level was pretty low. This good gravy! Who wouldn't want to retire to this? Yeah, I, I do remember in the news that uh, when the Nintendo Wii first came out. The old folks were clamoring to play it. Remember that? That was in the news. That I didn't hear too much about, but... Meh, I need to say Princess Peach when you live my youth. How old uh, are you? No, 50. no, no. Not even that, Silver. Like, they, they, they just play Wii Sports. Well, there you go. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah, I know. With the baseball in the... Yeah, but so, anywho, um, there's also theater. There's also a band. So, cool. Um... Last stop was the band because they see Dusty Pages rocking out. Wow. <laughs> okay. Dusty and Twilight bonded for a bit until Twilight reveals the book to Dusty. And oh my, she is angry. She is angry and storms out. Carrying her mail. Awesomeness. Um, so Twilight doesn't understand why this happens and so on. And realize that she needs to set things right. Like, even though the fine is there, like, it could be thousands of bits and whatnot, that doesn't matter anymore because right now, it's all about Dusty and her happiness. So, Twilight tries to go to her and tries to apologize. And, yeah, she finds her at, well, <laughs> uh, what was it? Battlefield Squash Fruits? What was it again? I'm just gonna say paintball until Silver says otherwise. Oh, I see. I'm I'm suddenly fact checking everything. I can only move so fast, all right. <laughs> I'm just saying. While you do that, I'm just gonna continue on. Oh, I see how it is. Keep Silver occupied so he can't chime in with his n- nonsense. No, uh, if you see. want to chime in, go chime in, man. I'm just feeling airtime. Well, they call it the battlefield of squishy fruit on the wiki. True, uh, which is a funny title to say at the least. It's a it's a battlefield ripe with possibilities. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's crossed into the core. <laughs> so, anywho, Twilight and Spike goes there, tries to find Dusty, and yeah, no one's stopping for her. Like, everybody's game on. Until Dusty says, uh, 
time out and takes Twilight aside because it, this seems to be bothering Twilight and Dusty notices it. Um, she sits Twilight down and talks to her about, well, not working there. Like, because of the late book, Dusty Pages felt she's free. She's free from the responsibility of perfection. Yeah, because apparently Canterlot library system is hard, hardcore. Well, if you have a community of snooty, snooty unicorns, why not, right? Let's see. Honestly, I'm surprised there are, I worry about unicorn mental health at this point. Mm. Think about it. All the mental breakdowns we've seen, how many of them were unicorns? Uh, let's see. There's Twilight and probably Rarity and Moondancer. Did she count? I know Rainbow Dash has had a few mental breakdowns. Applejack and Minkie mm. Pie. Uh, that's, that's true. Mm, my theory is falling apart rather quickly. And also Fluttershy. You're welcome. Oh, what can we say except you're welcome? Still, I, I do think unicorns may be more prone to mental breakdowns because, my God, they are unforgiving. <laughs> yes. So, anywho, um, Dusty explains that she didn't got fired. She quit because, well, she wanted to see the world. She wanted to experience a lot of stuff. And... She said that making a mistake kind of frees you. Like, it makes you learn from your mistakes and so on. So, yeah, much good lesson to learn. Well, I do love the book that she gave, uh, that she showed Twilight. Did you even read it? <laughs> Perfe Perfection, The Impossible Pursuit. <laughs> that was how, my favorite part. How different would this series have been if Twilight actually read the book? <laughs> Very, and that's the scary part. Oh my goodness. Very scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe in another universe. <laughs> Probably, but still, <laughs> in another dimension. Yes. With voyeuristic intentions. <laughs> oh boys. <laughs> so anywho, Twilight and uh, Dusty Pages born, and well, they're happy now. Yay, much awesomeness. So, Twilight goes back to Cantalot to return the book because uh, it's still a late book thing. And after, what was the name again? Mm, Final Justice? No. Um, ah, First Folio. Yes. So, anyway, First Folio checks her bills and whatnot. And the total sum goes up to 25 bits. Yes. And everybody's surprised. And First Folio just says, ah, nobody really... Uh, knows the rule and it's just kept to a month so yeah but we don't tell them <laughs> uh, jokes on them well again this is where it's like oh you've surpassed bill and ted because because they had a library debt into the thousands by the way <laughs> minor aside but mm -hmm. the the establishing shot of the library after they uh after twilight returns or it says goodbye to dusty pages you've got the the goth and the the sunny uh ponies and then Twinkle Shine and uh, some other uh, constellation pony. But then there's there's two guys who have like sweaters tied around their necks. Yeah, I see them. I want to punch them. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Why? Yeah, I want to. Yeah, I do the same. Not gonna lie. There, there's just something about that fashion statement: tying a sweater <laughs> around your neck. Like I don't know, it's okay. Around the waist is fine. That's sort of rugged, outdoorsy. But around your neck, don't be surprised if someone wants to punch you in the face. <laughs> so, anywho, people at BronyCon, you went to annoy Silver dressed like that. <laughs> I won't be held responsible if I accidentally punch someone in the face. No, Silver. <laughs> don't es well, don't especially sorry. wear a scarf while he's going to the washroom. Because <laughs> then he's really going to push you out of the way. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. So, anywho, um... After they pay, pay the bill, um, Twilight says, oh, would you like me to put the book back into the library? And First Folio says, ah, no, nah, that's that's an old uh, revision. We got a newer one. And Spike says, oh, if that's the case, can Twilight have it? And yeah, she has it. It's like when you're trying to get like a new college book. Oh, I'm just going to get used a copy of the old edition. Nope, you're supposed to get the new edition because why not? <laughs> because there's updates. Because you need to pay more money for no reason other than we tell you to. It's like, yeah. okay. Because revisions. Great. Because the newer one has uh, the correct spelling of the word color. 
Oh, wait, is it a U? Is there, do they add a U to it? No, previously that has a U. Now they removed the U. Get it? <laughs> oh, it's, oh, I see how it is. The, the, the English English versus American English debate continues. Yes. Gray. Yes. Is it spelled with an E or an A? I don't know. <laughs> I haven't okay, thought it spelled with an E. <laughs> Oh, 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 you're gonna, you're gonna open this, this can, Torterra? Are you ready to go into the, the, the gray area? Bring it on! <laughs> He's not ready. He's not ready. Oh, I'm, I'm so ready. Rushing. My body is ready. Oh, boy. So Your ready. body is ready for, what, for small sausage links? <laughs> not that kind of ready! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you walked in on that one. Yep. Oh, All right, boys. both accepted. Gray is the gray with an A is the popular spelling in the U.S. While gray with an E reigns supreme in the United Kingdom. Oh, really? No. Actually, I like gray with an E, even though I'm American. See, communist. <laughs> I'm not even in the United Kingdom. I'm Canadian. Wait, 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 wait. Tara and I come from the Commonwealth. You guys jump ship really hard. So, no comment. We jump ship really hard. Yeah, you what? Say, what does that make, how does that make sense? You, they, they went to war. Yeah, we went to war. It was kick ass. I mean, no disrespect to Canada, but you basically said, um, hey, United Kingdom, can we, um, can we be independent? Sorry, 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 <laughs> sorry, sorry, so sorry, sorry. Yeah, that's pretty much how it went for Canadians. What really, Tara? Defend yourself. I don't know my history. <laughs> the fuck? Oh. Oh. Oh, well, that's no excuse. <laughs> Tartara, I don't even know history that well. I just read the Daily Show book on democracy, and they <laughs> included that little bit about uh, ca- Canada. Really, now? Well, nothing oh. on the, what if nothing on the internet is real? What if it's all lies? No, you, you, you at least. <laughs> Are you saying we're fake? No, I never said you were fake. Are you saying Norman's obsession with mini sausage links is fake? Well, I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not. <laughs> oh, Tartara, you can hear Canada crying. Oh, Canada, our home and native land. Oh, we're going there, huh? <laughs> Boys, but anywho, um, what, what bad bad singing? Sure, why not? <laughs> well, at least you know it's not like Fergie that butchered the U- United States uh, national anthem. Oh please, the, Fergie, nothing. Roseanne Arnold. Oh, that's you. I say, can you see <laughs> by the dawn's early light? Anywho, if that episode <laughs> ends, <laughs> so um, well, let's go into final thoughts. Silver, what do you think of said episode? Oh, the ramparts we watched! <laughs> it's all okay, fun games on here. How long is that song? How long is that song? <laughs> it's oh, even don't. longer. It's not don't. even close to being done. Yeah, don't diss our national anthem. It's about three minutes long, right? It's as long as it damn well pleases, thank <laughs> you very much. <laughs> yeah. You're even triggered, Norman. America! America! <laughs> Word? Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, right. Right. add the yeah, add to the tip jar. Mm. I, mm, oh yes, well, I think that was patriotic, so <laughs> you still have to pay though. <laughs> <laughs> oh boys. <clears throat> anyway, it is funny. I started this podcast by railing against socialism, and now suddenly <laughs> I'm so, I'm screeching the national anthem. I don't know when I became a <laughs> mega patriot. <laughs> Good. L- <laughs> But, okay, this episode, which I gotta be honest, this podcast may have been more entertaining than the episode itself. <laughs> oh, I can agree on that one. <laughs> yeah, true. Now, uh, the, I love the episode. It's, it's, it's fun. It's fun to see Twilight reconnecting with a few, uh, Canterlot ponies. It's great to see Moondancer again, even, even checking in on the Tasty Treat, even if we don't see, uh, Saffron Masala and Coriander Kumar. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. But I also love that it's Twilight getting a lesson of letting go of perfection, which is something she's going to need to do when she ascends the throne. Because she's often held Celestia as perfect, even though we know that's not true. Yeah. Oh, is that so not true? So this was a good lesson for her to learn, and I'm glad. But I am also glad that they, they presented it as more than just Twilight overthinking and, and freaking out over something. No, Canterlot really is that intense 
and the pressure they she seems to be subjected to. It's a miracle she emerged as as stable as she did, and I use that term relatively. And anything else? And the rocket's <laughs> red flag. <Anyway. laughs> <laughs> what about you? What do you think? I mean, pretty much the same thing that I've basically displayed throughout the uh, beginning of the podcast. Honestly, my opinions never really change when we get to final thoughts. Right, I don't. All right, then. I mean, it's, it's never to change. Like the final thoughts always. What have you? Well, I enjoy stuff. No, no, no. So, Tara, what about you? Well, like I said before, uh, I also enjoy. I enjoyed it from the beginning to end. I like the comedy, and I like. I like how the lesson was really important. How you can't always be perfect at basically anything, or you know, you can't have perfection and basically like a lot of continuity here too from season one and season uh, there's so many seasons <laughs> but it also brought back some memories that i used to have when i was little like when i was late for a book and yeah <laughs> i was never late so i don't know if you want to know the story but yeah <laughs> i mean if you want to tell it go ahead man well i was really young at the time so i didn't know any better basically i read to the book from my school library and I haven't handed it in for like a month. And I don't know if I had, I don't remember if I had to pay for it or, well, then again, I'm young, so I didn't have a job. I'm pretty sure my parents had to pay for it, but I don't know if they did or not. <laughs> but yeah, that book was gone for like months and I haven't brought it back for a while. Uh, all right, all right, all right. And as for me, this episode was a lot of fun. Like you guys mentioned, the continuity from uh, season one that been brought up here was a lot of fun uh, the hijinks that Twilight was involved like you can see the stress level uh, increasing each time she didn't get to find uh, dusty pages and when she did she broke down like I mean that's kind of a story arc there to itself an emotional story arc and yeah we, we get to see dusty saying that because you sent the book late uh my perfection or my perfect streak was gone and I was freed from it. And which is kind of an important lesson to itself because perfection is virtually impossible. Like you have to consider what is perfect and whatnot. If you try to work at it and keep going at it, it might not be perfect. Even if you think it is, people might hate it and dubbed it a failure and whatnot. I mean, some of the creative person I know, say that one of their least favorite work is the world's favorite work. So that's something to ponder about. But anywho, um, well, uh, that's my thoughts. So Silver, what are we going to do for next week's review? Well, I think we're going to step outside My Little Pony for just a little bit. We're going to go revisit My Little Witch Academia, except that we're going to watch the other My Little Witch Academia, not the first My Little Witch Academia, but this new Little Witch Academia covers her first day at school. So technically, it's the first My Little Witch Academia, but not. Yay. And by the way, Silver, there's no mine. I am coming off a series, Norman. You're going to have to allow me a little... You're going to have to allow me a little uh, leeway here. If I refer to them as unicorns, I reserve that right. All right, all right. I hope that this doesn't carry over for next week. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. It's what happens if Pinkie Pie decided to become a unicorn. <laughs> oh, chaos. For you bronies out there. Oh, chaos. But yes, next week we will be reviewing the first season of My Little... <laughs> Thank you, Silver. Uh, My Little Aha, Witch Academia. I've infected you. <laughs> little Witch Academia. Yes, My Little Witch Academy. So, no! Uh, he did it again! Oh my he god. Little... <laughs> what? Damn it, Norman. Even I know. But then again, I'm an anime weeb, so it, it makes sense that I can say not. I don't say My Little Witch Academia. No, it's Little Witch Academia. Yeah, that's what I say. My Little Witch Academia. Yeah. God oh, damn it, Norman. Purpose. Now, now you're driving Safi. Norman, you, you've come so far in the ways of trolling. I'm so proud. I'm so proud. Applause, everyone. Anywho, that will be next week's thing. So, oh boy, today was a fun episode. So, so anyway, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at themishowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at the show, And my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people catch you? 
Well, uh, at the time that this podcast is going to go live, I believe you can catch me at BronyCon. Yeah. Um, e. So that will be a, a good times. So I'm looking forward to seeing everybody. If you can't make it to BronyCon, no worries. You can find me on the Twitters under MLP Silver Quill. You can also find me on DeviantArt where I post good night ep- uh, comics for Pink- with Pinkie Pie wishing everyone well. I post editorials uh, and comic reviews on Equestria Daily. And if you do a search on YouTube for Silver Quill or After the Fact, I shall appear. Ah, nice, nice, nice. And also, uh, Seppi, where can the good people find you? Okay, so I'm also going to be at BronyCon, but I'm going to be in the Artist Sally, a.k.a. way away from Silver. But close to the bathroom, right? <laughs> Not really, yeah. because she'll be close to the mail. <laughs> Anyways, you can find me at Ori Sally under the table uh, 29 Bright Crystal Studios. I'll be selling Dakimakuras! Yay! Anyways, uh, if you're not going to BronyCon or you don't want to buy merch from me, which will make me sad if you're going to BronyCon, anyways, uh, you can find me under the name Anime Christy under Twitter, Instagram, DeviantArt, or you could even donate three bucks to me at coffee.com. Just search for Anne May Christie and I shall appear. All right, all right, all right. And Sabi, weren't you at ShortCon recently? No, I live in Ohio, but I couldn't get a table. Ah, uh, all right, did I? And not, and I and I got sad, but it's okay because I have a BronyCon table. At least BronyCon loves me. <laughs> my own state doesn't love me, yeah. even though I give it all my praises. Even though everybody tells me Ohio is boring. Well, funny enough, I, uh, one of my friends is there at TrotCon. And yeah, well, that that's, well, that was a thing. So anywho, uh, Tara, where can the good people find you? Well, the good people can also find me at BronyCon, but if they can't, that's totally fine. They could always find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Tortera1324. And if they want, they could also donate to me on my Patreon account. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And also please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and Stitch Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on 25.com. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you'll get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Amy, Lucky Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Jeffrey, and also myself. Like, thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecilia the Quill. I have been a Safi. And I am a Torterra. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the show. See ya. Are the land of the free and the home of the Oh my god, my ears! Play ball. Music to my ears. Bye! Bye bye! Oh, say can you see? No, not this again. I am leaving. <laughs>